am Mr. Long Short. So Spider Gwen, as I think everybody knows, is um, is catching a lot of heat currently, and deservedly so, right? A uh, fantastically interesting character. Um, I think the book that has the potential to go through the roof there is really the um, Edge of Spider-Verse number two, but particularly that black variant um, error. I, I, I equate that one or I compare that one to um, uh, Ultimate Fallout 4, uh, the newsstand edition. Now, there were no newsstands when um, Edge of Spider-Verse 2 came out, um, but, but this one I think is particularly unique. And I'm not here to talk about that book today. Everybody knows about it. It's really starting to get um, up there in price. Um, I'm going to talk a touch on a handful of Spider-Gwen books um, that I think are super interesting and um, and then, then we'll touch on a couple of books um, um, as it relates to, to Riri Williams, who, who I also find uh, particularly compelling. So the first one is, is this book right here. I'm not sure um, how many of you know what this book is. Um, it's very scarce. That's Spider Gwen number zero second print, um, which is actually the seventh reprint of Edge of Spider Verse number two. Uh, Edge of Spider Verse number two um, um, had five second printings under Edge of Spider Verse two. Um, the one that I really like there and I've touched on in the past is that design variant. Um, I think outside of the first print, that design variant is particularly appealing um, and one that you should run to. Um, and there's there's probably just under 10,000 of those um, design variants, uh, similar to what we've seen for Null, um, you know, Venom number three. So you, if you use that as a gauge, um, you can see, you know, I think material price appreciation for that book. Um, this, um, Marvel then started um, reprinting it under Spider-Gwen Zero, more of an origin type book, right? Zero is oftentimes where right, I imply that there's an origin, so they came out with um, Spider-Gwen Zero. Uh, the first print, um, which is very heavily printed uh, for a reprint, probably in the neighborhood of 30,000, and then the second print. Now the second print has less than 5,000, at least five, less than 5,000 were ordered by retailers, uh, making it by far, in a way, um, the shortest printed of all of the Age of Spider-Verse reprints. So, um, this is a book um, I think um, can go absolutely crazy um, in the secondary market. Um, what happens when characters get popular is um, first appearances naturally get chased, um, but the books that really start to take off are those books that are just harder to get. Um, books that are rarer uh, in shorter supply. Um, people want what they can't have, um, so this book fits very firmly into that camp. Um, so something I think you should be definitely be taking a look for. Um, if you can find it out there. It's not on a lot of people's radars right now. I think you can probably find it somewhere between $20 and $40. I think that's going to look like a bargain um, um, when um, when people wake up to that book. Um, the second book that I want to talk about is uh, is another Spider-Gwen book. Um, it's Spider-Gwen number one, um, but the third printing, all right, in green. Um, let me tell you why this book is particularly appealing. Spider-Gwen number one, when it was printed, had a very large print run. Uh, the character was very, very hot, um, you know, a print run of roughly 225,000, right? By modern standards, that's big, uh, really big. Um, there was a second printing that came out um, that, that also had a fairly sizable print run. It's in blue, um, and I think that's somewhere around the 25,000 range, right around there, 20, 25,000. Um, which for, for a second printing is actually quite um, quite high. Uh, but by that point, retailers had enough of these books on the shelves. When the third print came to, um, out, um, um, they didn't need them, right? Plenty of the first print, enough of the second print. Who needs a third print at this point in time? And the orders fell off the charts. I can't even find the number ordered by retailers. Comic-Con cuts off their list at some point. The month that this came out, the list capped... I believe at around 1,200, meaning that there's likely less than 1,200 of these ordered by retailers, and my instincts tell me that it's it's far below that. Um, it just wasn't a book that people needed on their shelves, um, and if you look for it in the wild, it's very, very difficult to track down. Some of these may be stuck in dollar bins. They're usually banged up, 
um, but it's a book that I think has um, room to run. Um, the other problem with Spider Gwen number ones is I think it may be the book with the most variants and store exclusives. I mean, there's countless of them. I don't know, 30, 40, maybe 50. Um, you know, there are a lot of copies of Spider Gwen number one out there. Um, this third print, I think, is by far the rarest number one of all of her books. So one that you should definitely be on the lookout for when people begin to realize how tough this book is to find. Um, I can see prices beginning to really spike on that book um, and frankly get it in any condition you can get. Um, you know, my thoughts about conditions on super rare books, right, it, it's, it doesn't need to be a 9.8, right? If you're finding something in the nines for that book, um, given how it was treated, I mean, that's gold, right? It doesn't have to be a 9.8. If you find a 9.8, great. Um, for me, uh, if I find a book like that in the wild and it comes in, Wherever it comes in, I'm happy to have it because I know it's going to be hard to find. Uh, the last Spider Gwen book I want to talk about is her second appearance. Um, her second appearance, um, by everything that I can find, and, and please correct me if somebody has different information out there, but her second appearance was in Amazing Spider Man number nine. Um, um, Spider Woman, Silk, and Spider Gwen were, were all in that book. Um, and there's one book in particular um, that um, I think is um, exceptionally cool. Um, it's a comic exposure variant, which features her on the cover. Um, there, there were a number of different covers for Amazing Spider-Man number nine. That's the only one that has Spider-Gwen on it. So. Um, that's a book that you should be on the lookout for. Um, rumor has it that there's a sketch variant out there, um, which is actually even more rare. Um, you know, after people have looked for first appearances, number one, second appearances become very, very important. Um, you know, that book um, has um, has room to run, in my opinion, um, and uh, I don't really see anybody talking about it. Um, you know, my, my whole approach to moderns are where are the cracks in the market, right? Where are the super hot characters and where are their rarest books? And um, for Spider-Gwen, all three of those fall into that category. Um, she's going to be as big as Miles, and these are going to go um, up in value year after year after year as they get gobbled up. And, you know, when books have print runs as small as the ones that I just showed you, um, uh, you know, they, the supply really goes away and oftentimes they don't find their way back into the market or if they do very seldomly and when they do it tends to be for, for, for big, big prices. Um, you can find these right now, go out there, hunt for them. Um, I think you'll be really happy that you did. I'm going to touch on uh, a couple of Riri Williams books as well that, um, that I really like. Um, um, you know, I, I think people are aware of some of these. But I, I think even at the current prices, um, they're screaming buys, right? Um, you know, these books that I'm about to show you could, um, you know, could, could really hit um, Miles and Gwen type prices be before very long. So here we go. Iron Man, Invincible Iron Man 7, third printing. Riri Williams makes her first cover appearance here. Um, there's debate. Is that her first full? Is it a cameo? Does it show up her as Ironheart? Um, all of that I don't really want to get into. Um, that's a debate for, for another time, and I don't think any of it really matters, frankly. Um, that book um, was ordered by retailers to the tune of about 6500 um, A little bit more than half of what you're seeing from Venom Third Print um, which, which, is a, which is a good um, bellwether for, for where prices can go for these later printings on hot characters. As cool as Null is, uh, Riri is, um, you know, I think has a much bigger role to play both within Marvel um, and the future of the MCU. Um, so that third print um, is uh, an absolute home run book, in my, my opinion. I think that will eclipse the price of the first print by a comfortable margin over time. There's far fewer of them out there, 
and the fact that you can see her on the cover just makes it all the more appealing. Um, and we've talked about this before, but you know the ability to see a character on the cover uh, of a comic in the modern age when we're slabbing um, really adds to, to the desirability of that book. The cover of the first print is, is, is virtually identical to that one, um, with the exception that she's not on it. Um, not only is she on this cover, but it's short printed recipe for, for big, big price appreciation. So if I were you, go out and pick those up. I think even $50, $60 seems like a really fair price for a book like that when you look back on it, where I think it could really head. Um, and Ruby Williams is just awesome. Like she, she's super cool. She's right up there with, um, you know, the, the best the Marvel has to offer from their young characters. So along with that book is, um, is this one, right? The second printing of Invincible Iron Man number nine. Also, as you'll see, there she is, um, on the cover. Um, a lot of the community believes that this is her first full appearance. Um, I'm actually coming to a different um, mindset on, on first appearances, right? Back in the day, it was always, it's either this book or that book. Um, but maybe the right answer today is, well, what's the right set of books, right? And, and, and these two books clearly are the Riri Willem book that you, that you want. You, if you want to really capture um, Riri's um, emergence into Marvel, it's, it's about having both of them. Um, and um, everything that I said about that number seven applies to number nine. The print run is almost identical. It's in that 6,500 range. She's on, uh, on the cover there as well. And um, there's a large part of the community that believes that that is the book to have, that number nine, right? And, and, the, and the number nines um, are selling, you know, quite briskly at nine, eight. Um, I, I still believe that these two books have materially better legs than either one of the variants. Even 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 the cover B, which is um, by all accounts exceptionally hot, far fewer of both of these. Um, if you're going to put money to work in this character, right, the amount of money they're asking for that cover B number nine is crazy. I think you're going to get far better returns um, if you if you pick up. Um, that second print. So uh, just my two cents um, on Riri, uh, but two books I really like. Um, I'm going to talk about one other book that, that's really difficult um, to track down for whatever reason. I, I think it was a second print that just not many people ordered. Uh, the first the first one was fairly, um, uh, fairly heavily ordered, and then I just think the second one was, was under-ordered. So it's Invincible Iron Man, number one. This is when she basically takes over the series. And there's a lot of different covers for this book. Um, the, the first print book that I really like um, for this is the, um, is the 1 in 25 deco variant. Um, it, it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, um, but, um, but the second print, um, you know, I think also is a book that probably has a print run somewhere similar to what we were talking about for... Um, that Spider-Gwen third print, you know, in the thousands range, um, which if you think about a character as, um, as important as Riri, Riri Williams, um, that's crazy, right? When she begins to really accelerate and she's already started, um, you are not going to be able to get your hands on that book. I can't get my hands on that book right now. They're, they're very, very, very difficult to find. Um, I've been looking for them for, um, you know, for two years, and I found a handful of them. Um, so for whatever reason, these are out there. Nobody's posting them. Um, my guess is maybe they're stuck in dollar bins, um, but look for it. And you can identify it um, because the Invincible Iron Man um, trade dress is in blue, right? That's the, really the way to find it. Um, uh, the number ones, um, because they're so heavily printed, are, aren't particularly valuable, um, which means that... Um, um, you know, these may be thrown in with those dollar bins. You know, people don't realize that they're the second print. So um, keep an eye out for those. Um, you know, I, I think, um, you know, the, the potential for that book um, is also exceptionally high. Um, so those are six books uh, I just wanted to touch on. Um, and we're going to try to do this uh, once a week. Um, you know, please, you know, share any thoughts you might have in the comments. Um, if you have any other ideas of books you wanted to talk about, please let me know. I'm happy to cover um, whatever you'd like. Um, I've always been 
um, a bit more Marvel centric. Um, that's just from you know my interests as a kid have carried through to to uh, you know my adulthood. Um, but um, I appreciate you tuning in. Thanks for listening, and uh, we'll catch you again real soon. Yeah.